Greetings, friend. I just wanted to encourage you. I just wanted to, yeah, and encourage you right now. Um, I got a scripture, Joshua chapter 23, uh, starting at verse 8. Now, in, first, in the book of Joshua, you it's the children of Israel who are been enslaved, previously enslaved in Egypt. And God is, in the book of Joshua, they're possessing land that God has promised to them. And the land is anointed, and the land is very rich. And there was nations that were housed there before, and God is reminding them, when you go in and possess this land that I have for you, don't take up their customs. Don't take up their don't take up their customs, don't take up their culture, don't make agreements with them at all. In fact, remember me and my, remember me and my customs, right? And so uh, one thing I wanted to point out is that maybe you're walking through a season and you're you're getting ready to walk into the promises God has for you. And and, and I want to remind you that God's promises are yes and amen for you. He will bring them to pass. And you may go, okay, Grizz, how do you know that God's promises are going to come true? Like, how do I know? And and I, I good question. And I've been in seasons where, uh, and maybe it's like this for you, I've been in seasons where I'm like, God, you promised me this over here. But the battle in my life is so hard over here that I don't see how it's even possible. Scripture says God uses the foolish things to confound the wise. It says, do not despise the day of small beginnings, right? It says that he gives uh, power to the weak and strength to the powerless. I believe the reason God gives power to the weak is because he knows that weak people can be trusted with power. And he gives strength to the powerless because he knows people without power, they can be trusted with true strength. Scripture says that a God in Scripture says that his word goes out of his mouth like rain that goes forth and waters the earth and the earth produces fruit, right, and yields a harvest. His word goes forth out of his mouth and will not return to him void, but will accomplish that which what he sent it. And so God, in, in scripture, God, whatever promise he spoke to you, it will come to pass. But God, you have to attach your faith, attach your faith to God. It may require you going, God, I trust you. I can't see it. I'm afraid. Every part of my life feels like it is falling apart. But I trust you that you're able to do what seems foolish what seems foolish, you're able to confound me and what I what I know. Scripture says this about knowledge, our knowledge. It says that um, the peace of God surpasses all understanding, like our ability to understand. Be not anxious for anything, but through prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, thanksgiving. God, I trust you, right? Let your requests be made known to God. So that the peace of God, there's an exchange, right? The peace of God, which surpasses, overwhelms, runs over, surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind, right? Surpasses all understanding, our ability to comprehend. It, it says that um, our ability to comprehend, if we can understand how God it, it will do it, probably not God. Probably not God. The scripture says that uh, the the refers to the our foundation, the gospel of peace, as our our feet are shod like like shod in these military type boots, really sturdy boots, specific for soldiers. Who soldiers are those who do the work? They do the work. They move the nation. They protect the nation. Right. And 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 the scripture refers to those boots, the foundation of a soldier, as a peace. Peace and scripture refers to peace as the as, which surpasses God's peace, surpasses all understanding. It's nice to know that if you're in the middle of a battle, you're in a battle, right? You're moving into the promises of God. You know, you heal from, you set free from whatever type of slavery bondage you set free from, right? It's nice to know that you can be in the middle of a battle and your foundation is 
It's not 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 this world's peace that Jesus said. Not this world peace do I give you, but my peace, right? It's, it's nice to know that like that maybe these uh, these self help books of peace, and not those. You know, not a uh, you know it's a payday type of peace. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pay these bills. Not that type of peace. Not I didn't watch a nice Hallmark movie and I feel good inside. No, no, not that type of peace. The peace of God, the peace of God, like God's very confidence. That surpasses all understanding. It's good to know that in the middle of a battle, God gives you his peace, right? His peace as you're moving in. And so in the book of Joshua, we see the children of Israel moving into the promised land. And God very much is fulfilling a promise that he made to Eli. No, a promise that he made to Abraham, but a promise that he made to his children, the children of Israel, right? God is fulfilling a promise inside of a promise. Plot twist, right? And he's giving them instructions. The land is anointed in this specific land to a specific person and his descendants, right? And and who were enslaved. So not only that, he had to set them free from slavery. And then not only that, he had to break the slave mentality so that they can move into a land and possess it and, and reflect his glory and his will on their life. And that that people would reflect his existence throughout the throughout the world and history right and i wanted to, to point out about egypt sometimes the bondage in life can be so heavy sometimes the bondage in life can be so hard that god has to deliver us before he can give us a promise he has to set us free from our bondage before he can put a hope in our heart and go, I have this for you. Because in our bondage, we can't, it's hard to believe. It's very hard for the children, in scripture, very hard for the children of Israel to believe God for his word. They've been conditioned to believe that they were in, they were slaves. They were meant to be slaves. Sometimes God gives you a promise and it's so hard to believe. It's so hard to believe and he has to heal us and, 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 and deliver us and then win our trust and then give us a hope also that we can just trust him just to go huh i would like that you would like that follow me and and through this process of healing and deliverance we find ourselves in the book of joshua where god is giving them and performing his promise and and god's going to perform his promise to you i want to remind you of that sometimes the bondage is so heavy god has to live, deliver us before he can give us the promise and then that process, sometimes that process requires us to break our will. God has to go, no, you're not slaves. You're not slaves. You're kings and queens and priests and prophets. You're, you're, and, and God is bringing about his will in our life. And it's about his desire in our life. And that's why he's going to bring about his will in your life. So I just wanted to remind you that. So, okay, Joshua 23 uh, verse 8 says, But you shall hold fast to the Lord your God as you have done till this day. So we pause right here. You've been fighting battle after battle after battle after battle after battle, haven't you? But, but what's awesome is you have stood until today. Congratulations. Congratulations. And now scripture goes on to say, For the Lord has driven out from before you great and strong nations, multiple nations, God had to drive out before the children of Israel. They did not have a king. They did not have a, they had Joshua as a leader, but very much it was all built on them strategically listening and trusting God. And even though God is put using and, and they're fighting a battle, right? Fighting a battle, they have to trust God and obey him. And God is using that process to condition them to have the the spiritual character and integrity to possess the land that they're going into. You may feel 10 steps behind, but God can graduate you and bring you into the promise. But you may feel like, man, all hell is breaking loose and nothing's going right. And the, literally that process is what God is using you to promote you and graduate you into the promise he has for you. Very much God is doing a miracle inside of a miracle inside of a miracle and a promise inside of a promise inside of a promise. And you may think 
it's so foolish, but this is God, the one who dwells outside of time, breaking time in half, getting the children of Israel where he wants them. There, may, And I'll say this too, God's promises in your life, they have a time. They have a time mechanism where they, uh, they snap like a trap. There may be someone in your life you're praying for. There may be people in your life that don't know God. <clears throat> and you may be praying for them, but God's promise for that person's life that don't even know him, that may be enslaved, may be in a dungeon of their own addiction, um, mental disorder, financial ruin. They may be in prison. They may be in a hospital going through who knows what and, and far from. But there is a timing the one who dwells outside of time and, and desires us, right? Has, I got a time. I got a promise. And, and so there's a time that God's promises come about and they may not know God, but God who dwells outside of time knows them and is ready to accomplish his will. So I'll just say this, watch and pray, watch and pray. So moving forward, no one has been able to stand against you till this day. So it says, hold fast to the Lord your God as you have done this day, done to this day. For the Lord has driven out before you great and strong nations. But to you, but but as you, okay, hold on, let me start over again. Strong nations, but as for you, no one has been able to stand against you to this day. So you have held your peace. You have held it down. And the enemy has not been able to overcome you. And then it goes on to say, here's God's promises. One man of you shall chase a thousand. For the Lord your God is he who fights for you as he promised you. Therefore, therefore, take careful heed to yourselves that you love the Lord your God. So it goes on to say that one of you will rout out, cast out, stand down a thousand because it is the Lord that is fighting for you. And that was his promise to do so from the beginning. You may feel like you are not strong enough to walk this line. You may feel like when you look, you may be a David looking at a Goliath. And I'm, I can't take down the Goliath, but David did not stand on his strength. He stood on the Lord's strength. You standing on, you standing in your strength is not going to create a miracle at all. It's going to create the same result. But you trusting, and here it goes, it says, love the Lord your God, love God. Jesus' great promise was, Love the Lord your God with our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. You standing on who God is, loving God, standing on who God is, that's what overcomes the enemy. That's what that's your foundation. And David did not communicate, oh, I'm big and bad, and I've been doing push-ups, and I've been taking protein, and I've been, you know, and I've been eating my Wheaties. No, 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 no. That's gonna get you killed. You can't go into this battle. So God then gave you his promise, the foundation of peace, because you love him and you commune with him. But you got to stand on the father's strength. He's fighting for you as he's promised. Right. And so I wanted to remind you that you probably have an enemy that is you have an enemy that is fighting you nail and tooth and hand because you're walking closer to the promise God has for you. It feels like all hell is breaking loose, but it's because you're getting closer don't give up. Do not give up. You're getting closer. And the, and the Lord is driving out enemies before you. And you're in a season where if you look back, you were enslaved to something. And now you're free. You were delivered from something. You have a promise in your heart. And you're probably like, why did I ever think this was going to happen? Because the Lord, it's him and his mercy and his goodness. Scripture says it's the goodness of the Lord that leads men to repentance. It says that he is married to the backslider. It says he would leave the 99 sheep to go chase the one. The Lord is in love with you and he loves you and he's going to fight for you. He's going to fight for you. He's going to fight for me. And what we do, we got to thank him. We got to praise him and remind him, Father, I trust you. I don't know how it's going to happen. I do not know. And the battle is dark. It's hard. 
is a heavy one. Oh, the thoughts that you can't even speak, right? The things that you hear and, and things that you hear said to you, things from your past that come back up to haunt you. Oh, but the Father sees. But you know what's going to be awesome? That promised land. That promised land going to be so sweet. So sweet. Keep trusting the Father. Those who put their hope in the Lord will not be put to shame. Will not be put to shame. Scripture says he gives strength to the powerless and power to the weak. He gives strength to the powerless and powerless to the weak. That's because the Father can trust those that are weak with power. And the Father can trust those who are powerless with true strength. And so this process you've been going through is there to condition you and prepare you and build you and the enemy's fighting you and attacking you. But I want, next time you get a discouraging thought or a dark thought or something that comes against your mind or your heart, somebody on your job, I just want you to know and stop. Say, Father, I thank you. I don't know how you're working it out, but you are. I thank you. I thank you. And the enemies come against you with lies. I want you to know, identify that it's a lie. And Jesus didn't go. Jesus used the word of God to defeat the enemy. The enemy's lies as Jesus was getting ready to step into the promise of who he was and revealing himself to the world. Timing. God has a timing in your life. Trust the process. Trust the process. Trust the promise. Walk into the promised land, okay? I love you, my friend. I love you. Father, I pray right now, whoever is listening, that you would meet them in this moment. You'd meet them in your scripture. You'd meet them in a text. You would confirm what you're doing in their life right now. That still small voice, that peace, that truth, that faith, the, 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 the shield of faith that quenches the fiery darts of the enemy. Lord, I pray this season, this battle, this fight, the spiritual armor is just designed to teach us how to use it so we can have dominion and fullness in this promised land. Father, I pray, whoever is listening, that you refresh them, that you give them strength where they're powerless. You give them power where they're weak. That you renew their strength right now, Jesus, and renew a right mind. You have not given us a spirit of fear. That word is timidity to mayo, timidity. You've not given us a spirit to shrink back, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Father, your word will not return void in our life, Father. I just want to thank you for that. Your word will not return void. His promises are yes and amen. In Jesus' name, friend, I just want you to know I love you. I'm praying for you, and I will see you in the promised land.